In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up five drivers that will turn Blender into an Adding Bricks application. I can delete any brick by pressing X on the keyboard. I can duplicate any brick. And I can use custom properties to convert a brick into a half brick and to place the duplicate. And we can change the material linked to the brick changing the colour of the bricks to anything you like click the object properties button drag to make the properties window wider set the Y scale to 0.5 and the Z scale to 0.3 press S to scale 0.99 and enter rename the cube brick Right-click on its X location and add single driver. The location is purple to show that it is under the control of the driver. We can move the brick in the Y direction, but if we try and move the brick in the X direction, we fail because it is under the control of the driver. I'm going to use a custom property to control the X location of the brick so that we can only place bricks in locations where the bricks will fit together. Drag on the eight dots to move the panel to the top. Click the Add button to add a new property. Click the Edit button. Name the new property XLOCK, short for X location. Set the initial value to zero, no decimal place, will make it integer whole number. Set the minimum to minus 100 and the maximum to 100 and click OK. We have a property called XLOCK but how do we link it to the driver? Drag on the white diagonal lines to open up a new window and change the new window to a graph editor window and change the mode to drivers. Drag to make room to open up the properties panel, click the plus. Drag to hide the graph, we won't be using the graph. Select the X location driver. The only panel we will be using is the drivers panel. The first thing we have to do is link our custom property xlock to a variable. There is a default variable called var. Change its type to single property. Clicking on the property field, Blender lists the objects in the scene. Select the brick. The labels would be better if they said object and property. We want to put the xlock property in here. The syntax for custom properties is square bracket quote the name of the property quote square bracket. We can type that in or we can right click on the custom property, copy the data path, click on the path and do control and V to paste. We have now linked the custom property to the variable var. I'm going to give the variable a more meaningful name x alpha location var. The type of driver is scripted expression. The expression field is here. If I type in the name of the variable xl var, the driver is now linked to the custom property. Now when we change the custom property, the x location changes. But I want to be able to change the x location by half a blender unit. The easiest way of doing that is dividing by 2 in the expression. Now when we change the custom property, the X location changes by half a blender unit. Next, we have to do exactly the same for the Y location. Right click, add single driver, add a custom property, edit it, call it Y lock. Set its initial value to 0, its minimum value to minus 100, and its maximum value to 100, and click OK. To link the Y location property to the Y location driver, select the driver, 
change the variable type to single property, select the brick, right click on the property and copy data path, click on the path, control and V to paste, rename the variable, YLVAR for Y location variable, highlight it, control and C to copy, select the expression, control and V to paste, and divide by two and enter. Next, the Z location, which is slightly different, right click, add single driver, add a custom property and edit it, call it Z lock, now the Z location represents the layers of the bricks. I'm going to call the first layer layer 1 and that must be whole number. The minimum value, I'm not going to have layers underground so the minimum value will be 1 and set the maximum value to 100 and click OK. To link the property to the driver, select the driver, change the variable type to single property, select the brick, right click on the property and copy data path, click on the path and control and V to paste, rename the variable ZLVAR and highlight it, control and C to copy, select the expression, control and V to paste. The brick is too high. Because I called the first layer layer 1, there needs to be an adjustment of half a brick minus 0 0.5. Because the bricks are not one blender unit tall, we also need a scaling factor times 0 0.6 and enter. We can now only place bricks where bricks are allowed to go. I want to set up two more drivers, the first on the Z rotation, right click, add single driver, click add to add a custom property, click edit to edit it, call the property rotate, set its initial value to zero, no decimal places, we want the minimum value to be zero, we want the max to be one, so just click OK. To link the property to the driver, select the driver, change the variable type to single property, select the brick, right click on the property and copy data path, click on the path and control and V to paste, rename the variable ZRVAR, highlight it, control and C to copy, select the expression, Control and V to paste. We want to be able to rotate the brick by 90 degrees. In a simple world, we would multiply by 90. Unfortunately, the expression is evaluated in radians. 180 degrees is pi radians, or approximately 3.142. 90 degrees is half of pi, which is 1.57079632 copied from a spreadsheet. Changing the value of the rotate property does rotate the brick through 90 degrees. The final driver I'm going to set up is on the X scale. Right click and add single driver. Click the add button to add a custom property. Click the edit button. Call the new property half brick, set its initial value to 2, no decimal places, set its minimum value to 1 and its maximum value to 2 and click OK. To link the property to the driver, select the driver, change the variable type to single property, select the brick, right click on the property, copy data path, click on the path and control and V to paste. Rename the variable XSVAR for X scale VAR. Highlight it, Control and C to copy, select the expression, Control and V to paste. The brick is too long. We need to divide the expression by 2. We still have a problem. The bricks are either one blender unit long or half a blender unit long. 
If we want a small gap between the bricks, we have to multiply by a factor 0 0.99 times and enter. Now that the drivers have been set up, we no longer need the graph editor window. Drag on the white diagonal lines until the arrow appears and release the mouse button to close the window. Click the material button, call the material yellow. Click the diffuse color and set the blue value to zero. Clicking F, the material will be saved even if it's not linked to any object. Doing this, we can create a range of colors and at any time we can link any brick to any color. Click the Add New Material button, call the new material red, click the diffuse color and set the green to zero and click F. I have been using the Blender internal render but you can use Cycles render and it will work just the same. Next, I'm going to set up a ground plane with a grid pattern. If you want to skip ahead, click the link. Add Mesh Plane. Press S to scale 8 and enter. Go into Edit Mode. Scroll down. Click Subdivide and set the number of cuts to 7. Click the New Material button and call the new material grey. Click the add new material slot button. Click the new material button, call the new material green. Click the diffuse color, set the red to zero and the blue to zero. Change the view to the top view. Go into face select mode and select a face. Press C to go into C select mode and select faces to make a grid pattern. I'm going to leave two faces unselected to show where the front is. Press escape to get out of C select mode. Click on green, click the assign button and go back into object mode. To change the background colour, click the World button, click the Horizon colour and set the red to 0.2, the green to 0.3 and the blue to 0.4. Click the Plus to open up the Properties panel, scroll down, open up the Display panel and tick World Background, drag to close the Properties panel, click the Object Properties button, select the brick and we're ready to go. Use the green and red arrows to help work out whether you need to reduce Y or increase X. To add a brick to the scene, click the duplicate button and press enter. Place the new brick, changing its rotate property if necessary. Duplicate, press enter and place the new brick. Duplicate, enter, rotate and place. Duplicate, enter and place. Duplicate, enter, rotate and place. We can delete any brick at any time by selecting it and pressing X on the keyboard. We can change the color by clicking the material button, the browse material button and selecting a different color. We can make any brick the source of the next brick by selecting it, duplicate and enter. We can make a half brick by changing the half brick property and place it. Select, duplicate, enter and place. Drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view, select, duplicate and enter, increase the Z location and place. Generally it's a good idea to save regularly. I use save as and I have a file name plus a version number. I'm up to version 54 for the file in this tutorial. 
if I do file new to start a new session and then I load my file, where have the bricks gone? Because the driver expression contains a line of Python code, auto run is disabled. You have to click the reload trusted button and provided it's a file you've created, it's safe to click revert. That's the end of the tutorial. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.